Hello, everyone, and welcome. Paula Vale here. Welcome to Choices Finding Your Joy. Oh, so excited to be here with you today. Oh, and, and I just want to say a big thank you to my sponsor, onpointneuro.com, for making this possible. I'm so excited to have today to share with you Lily Sanders. Her life experiences, adversity, talent, sense of humor, and intense compassion has gifted her a purpose to write, influence, and coach others. As a magazine columnist, Lily inspired thousands while writing her own powerful book, Truth to Triumph, her newly international released book. Truth to Tr Triumph, a spiritual guide to finding your truth, is already transforming lives. I am, just want to say welcome. I'm so excited to have you here, Lily. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be here. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's begin with a bit of your background. Tell us, tell us what brought you to the point you're, you're at now. Wow, that's a little over ten, uh, five decades. But <laughs> well, a uh, uh, abbreviated uh, version of my background is um, so I was raised in the Northeast, in the suburbs of New York, and uh, have three other siblings. And uh, I was um, uh, I had a very challenging upbringing and um, with those challenges, um, there were some struggles, but I was definitely that little girl with a lot of dreams, uh, a, a few big dreams and, and, and aspirations, uh, which I'll get to because many of those aspirations and dreams were, were actually achieved by the age of 23 but uh, a little rewind is growing up uh, I had a very I had a violent father and a very timid um, uh, mother and uh, th hence those were the challenges and uh, there was a lot of um, uh, physical abuse mental emotional and so in short I don't really have any happy memories growing up not really but uh, by the time I was 23 I realized you know a lot of those dreams that I had as a little girl I always wanted to be a, a dancer on stage performing and I wanted to be an actress and so uh, I did wind up on stage by the age of 23 on a star search with Ed McMahon. I don't know if you remember that, Paula. It, that was the show. That was the, oh that was the first um, competitive show. And there were many categories. There was not just dance. I was in the dance uh, competition um, category, but there was uh, dancers, musicians. Uh, there was the acting category, uh, comedians. I mean, a lot of pe great people came out of that show and, and had moved on. Uh, so I was on this role of auditioning and, and winning these auditions. And the next audition that I won was actually took me into a very interesting uh, uh, job as a showgirl dancer with Ringling Brothers, Bonham and Bally Circus, which is the iconic circus that just closed uh, this past year, 2017. And uh, that was a really interesting dance gig. Uh, not exactly the army that I thought I signed up for. <laughs> My room was three feet by six feet. Oh. I kid you not. And yeah, and so all the showgirls lived on one train car and each little pocket door that you opened was another, you know, one of another girl's room. And it really wasn't a room, but it was the room. And uh, I was showgirl number 13. You know, you open that door and there was just this three foot by three foot by six foot room with a window. And um, that's how we traveled from one city to the next. And we hit 59 cities in a year. That was pretty, wow. uh, that was a pretty interesting and amazing and fun and very, very hard work. Um, I talk about that in my book, Truth to Triumph as well. So my book is not really all about domestic violence. However, 
when I was on my, on my road to what I felt was my purpose at the time, I took this 180 pivot in shorts and I wound up 17 years later in, uh, found myself uh, as a battered wife for 14 years. I lived behind a veil of silence mm -hmm. and uh, had a child, raised a child, divorced. And it was, uh, I, I had three very successful franchises as a single divorced mother, um, but all behind a veil of silence. And um, I always say that it took not one tall building, but two tall buildings to fall on my head before I had an awakening. And so that's kind of what brought me to writing Truth to Triumph. That's where I, um, I've been a coach helping other people, uh, men and women, really, really see past all of the minutiae in life situations and really um, triumph over every life situation because we are not a life situation, we are life and we are separate. And I, I talk about this in my book, Truth to Triumph, finding our truth and what is our truth you know our truth is what's absolute and pure uh about us we are you know this is our body that 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 the vehicle that is driving who the essence of who we really are inside and uh we what we are our truth is really independent of any life situation any happening and any event and uh, I, I always like to say, and I say this in Truth to Triumph, our truth is really what is in that space after the exhale of an experience. And that's our truth. Oh, Lily, you are, you are an inspiration. And wouldn't you say with the experiences and the, the triumph that you've made, I, I would think that is makes such a huge difference when you're reaching out and helping others. Oh, yes, no doubt, no doubt. Because really, it's not about the stories. Uh, I'm not special, uh, any more special than anyone else. Um, but the point is, uh, sometimes we have to tell our stories so that people understand that pain is not your individual burden. We all experience pain, every single one of us. We all experience loss, every single one of us. We all have our own story. But really, um, uh, what we need to do is really not get trapped in those stories and really uh, let go of those stories. But what we learn and how we push through beyond, over, above, however it is we have to do it uh, to release those stories and really triumph in our life is really what matters. Because what we want to do, in short, is we want to go from pain into peace. If we don't do that, the alternative is pain into suffering. We don't want to suffer. We all want to be happy. We don't want conflict. Uh, we want love in our life. Yeah. And isn't, isn't it wonderful to know that we all do experience things and we can share that and and know we're not alone in that. That kind of Of helps. course. Yes. Yes. That's why I like to say, yes. and I say this in truth to try, a pain is not at your individual burden. You know, and, and knowing that we all share pain at, at one level or another is really important, not only uh, to, for someone to, to, to feel better about it, uh, about themselves, but also it really brings a sense of shared compassion. So I can have, you know, we can have shared compassion as a, as a global family. Yes, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Oh. What would you say to the listeners? Give us a few of what you feel are, are the biggest, strongest points that you make in this book. Okay. Uh, one of the strongest points that, uh, you know, key points that I make in this book would be first uh, love, and that begins with self-love. And, uh, you know, love is the essence of all consciousness. And I say in Truth to Triumph, it is uh, the, uh, the yeast that develops and gives rise to our daily bread. And um, in fact, um, uh, I wrote an, uh, I have an e-course that I'll talk about quickly before, before we're done uh, for the listeners uh, and viewers um, that really underscores a lot of the lessons that are in Truth to Triumph. It's called Seven Gateways to Triumph. So you don't have to read the book to take the course. It kind of is kind of a shortcut, uh, a crash course to that. 
Anyway, love, beginning with self-love. Another key point is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a key point that I make in Truth to Triumph. It is the first step for healing in our body, our mind, our spirit. And uh, when we can clearly see a healthy, happy self, and we can really vibrate with, with the frequency of having that as our birthright, I believe that that's our birthright, then we can heal. Uh, the third is uh, a big point that I make also is contribute. And, um, you know, we can contribute, doesn't have to be, you know, money or large amounts of money. In, in fact, we contribute by serving others. And, uh, you know, and again, it starts with ourself, loving ourselves, serving ourselves, and then serving others, even in the workplace. Uh, it, it's those simple, subtle, loving, kind acts that really can change the vibration, uh, you know, that, that vibrational energy of love on the planet. Yes. So those are key points. Another huge key point is choice. Um, because I talk about different situations and, and adversity, uh, we need to know, or I need, uh, I would like listeners and viewers to know that, um, and also when you read my book, Truth to Triumph, that situations may not always turn perfect in, in your life, but the choice to have peace in a situation is always there. And if there's peace in a situation, if we choose to have peace in a situation, uh, and then there's peace in a situation, then that situation truly is perfect. Yes. Does I, that make sense? It does. It does. I love you it. You know, we can go through different, you know, trials and tribulations and, you know, we can get there, you know, a couple of months down the road or a week down the road or a year down the road, like, you know, or we can choose to have peace in that situation, get to the same place, but with peace. With peace. And isn't that just where we want to be. I yes. love it, Lily. I love it. Well, everyone, we're going to pop out for just a moment and Lily and I will be right back. Thank you, Lily.